All right, today we're going to talk about um, washing your show cap. So what we have here, um, Lucas is washing his Angus heifer here, and the first thing that he's going to do here is he is going to take his hose and get the calf completely wet. He really concentrates um, around the feet, getting the mud out of there, because this time of year we're getting a lot of rain, so we really want to keep those hooves clean to prevent hoof rot. You can see on the sides of his wash rack, he has a couple bars to keep his heifer from turning from side to side. Um, you don't have to have anything that fancy. You could simply drive a couple T-posts and cover them with um, some PVC. Do that relatively cheaply if you had an outside wash rack. And that really helps control the calf and what they do. That way they don't move around. It's real important to keep the calf's head tied up tight their head in a position where um, you are going to look at them, see them in their best position, because while you're on the wash rack, this is also a really good time to analyze your calf. Uh, this is where you see them up close, you see them with their hair wet and for what they are, so you can see if possibly they're getting a little too fat, getting pony on you, or you can see if they need some added protein to build some muscle, or just some added fat to get some cover on them. It's a really good spot to analyze your calf. So with that being said, we like to have it where the floor, um, you have the back end slightly lower than the front end. Our drain is toward the back of the wash rack. That way we can see the calf in its best possible position. Do I know we see a lot of wash racks where the water drains forward and out in front? Um, it doesn't really give you the best view of the calf. So as you see, Lucas went through, um, rinsed his calf off. Now he's going to start adding soap. And the method that um, we generally use is we use a foamer. Um, these foamers, um, he's won a few of these at some junior livestock shows. They sell these at most feed stores. They're relatively inexpensive. What we found with these is we save a lot of money on soap because they don't utilize quite as much soap um, as would um, the traditional way. Now, you don't have to have a foamer. We didn't use a foamer for years and years. We just used dish soap. And with that dish soap, all we did was just spray the soap in the water stream. And you can see how that sprays on just the same. And we just found that we wasted a lot of soap and spent a lot of extra money um, that we didn't need to on that. Okay, once the calf is, has been um, soaked and you got her suds up, the next step is going to be scrubbing. Now, for cattle that aren't super, super dirty, we like to start off by just scrubbing them straight down their back. We try to scrub the hair in the natural position it lays. Um, we see a lot of people scrub them in circles, and that's okay. We do that too on spots that are extra dirty. You might have to go a few different directions, but in the end product, we like to just take our scrubby and scrub the calf in the general direction that the hair lays. You can see as he keeps working around, he's just working, um, going the hair down. He's going to make sure that he gets, you can see she's a little bit tender on top. And by handling and being with these calves all the time, we can find things like that. Make sure she doesn't have some irritation. You want to really make sure you get back under that flank area, that um, spots that you might not see. You can see a lot of times kids will get a lot of buildup there on their calves. That's more important probably on steers if they're going to get handled to have those areas and that flank extra clean. Um, but always want to make sure our cattle are clean. He usually ends up by just washing the eyes, washing the face, making sure we don't have anything um, left up there because you should go to present your cattle to the judge. Judges notice the little details. You want to make sure that you've taken care of those little details and if you take care of them at home and you treat every day at home like you're at a show, when you get to the show it becomes easy. Now once he's done um, washing and scrubbing on his calf, he's simply going to clean out his scrubby. The reason he does that away for the next calf, we don't have any manure. He usually kind of cleans off the wash rack floor around him. Uh, just to give yourself, always have a clean, nice space to work. You don't want to work in piles of manure all the time. Your cat, it sometimes can be treacherous for your cattle. Plus, if you had an animal that was sick, that would kind of leave that sickness right there for the next calf when they come. Up rinse top down. You want to really make sure um, you be careful around that head. You don't want to get water in their ears when you're rinsing up there. Um, otherwise, it'll kind of throw off the balance of the calf. 
So it's just gonna, gonna go through, be careful around that face. If you have to, you can grab hold of that ear and hold it closed while you're rinsing that. Um, just work around the calf a lot on rinsing. You really gotta make sure all that soap gets out because if you don't, it's gonna end up having some buildup on the calf and you're gonna get a lot of dandruff. So that's kind of one big mistake people make is when they're washing their calves, they don't take the extra time to double check that everything gets rinsed out. Usually we go over both sides two times, that way we're for sure we know we got all the water out in case some of the soap um, traveled from one side to the other. So really spend a lot of extra time getting that out. Once we're done rinsing the calf, now we're gonna brush it out. We like using a rice root brush. The rice roots um, in there kind of stimulate the hair follicle, help kind of with the growth of the hair. It um, wicks away a lot of the excess water that we see in there. So drying the calf and working its hair will be a little bit less time consuming because we're getting the water out. So we take that rice root brush, we let brush the hair in its natural position. So on a calf, the natural position would be the top line generally lays straight back the sides and the body hair generally lay straight down, and then the belly usually goes backwards, um, and that's kind of how the hair will naturally lay. So we get all the hair going back to its natural position using that rice root brush, and once we're done with that, we'll move on to combing the calf. Now that we're done brushing on the calf, we're gonna take our uh, scotch comb. We like to use these plastic fluffer type combs. Um, we're gonna get the tail head set in right, we're going to um, comb down the top and we're gonna comb the calf. That way when we're completed with this, we're ready to blow dry the calf. So what we've done is we've went through, we've, on our washing process, we started off by really um, spraying a lot of rinse type water in. We got all the excess dirt and mud out. We followed that up by adding in soap, soap in the calf. Then we scrub the calf and we're done with that. We brush the hair down and we finish up with using our scotch comb.